Hey, it's Sabertruid here. This is uh, the PC cabinet bookshelf TV stand that uh, I've been making for uh, Colega 4221 over on overclock.net and I'll be delivering it uh, uh, this next in the middle of January here. I'll be hand delivering it and helping him set it up and we'll take more bids then. Uh, still no glass uh, doors in the front because uh, my common sense was tangling it told me. Don't do it, man. Don't do it yet. Not yet. Uh, don't have his DVD drive. He's got his own DVD Blu-ray drive that he'll be installing in uh, this slot here. But I wanted to show you that uh, we've got an extension power lead and an extension data lead ready to go for that. So all he has to do is plug it in, slide it in, and there's two small holes underneath. Okay, there's the reset switch. There's the fan controllers, they already have their extension leads uh, routed down the back. I'll show you in a second. Power switch, 20 and 1, whatever you want to call it, card reader, front panel. Got a few extension cables to buy for that, but it's got plenty of time for that. Here's the Frozen Q T Virus Reservoir with the cold cathode it's trapped inside of it. Okay, here's uh, the PC compartment. And uh, I'll just go over this kind of a little more in detail here. We've got five hot swap drives. All you have to do if you want to pull a drive is just grab it, pull it out, pop in another one. Okay. If you look back in there, you'll notice a 360 radiator. Then you'll see this big rectangular opening. That's for another 360 radiator and fan package which is secured from the back, and I'll show you that. You might have a little trouble making out the motherboard tray. It's uh, made of polycarbonate, so it's virtually indestructible. It's got great big openings in it for airflow, cable routing. That's the card bracket. Okay, That's all secured with standoffs to the back. Now over here we have this dressed up uh, MCP 655 variable speed pump with the bits power dress up kit on it. What this allows us to do is put it front and center because it's so damn pretty and we can use regular G quarter type fittings to do the plumbing and the way this plumbing is going to work is the outlet from the pump is going to go right to that radiator that's not installed and then it'll go in series up to this radiator and then it'll go to the CPU, motherboard, graphics cards and back out to the reservoir. Reservoir will dump down and supply there. And there will be a drain. Okay. I'll show you a couple more little things. This is a grill with a half inch filter insert in it. I've used touch latches to secure it so you can pull it out which is difficult to do one-handed, but basically. Okay, and that's how you're going to reach up inside and complete the plumbing up to this port here, which gets a Delrin Danger Den fill port, which I don't have, which will be installed on site. Okay. The reason this is sort of incomplete like this is, the, uh, is that Caliga wants to do a lot of this himself. So I'm going to be helping him. He's got his parts there and I'll be uh, helping him. This is a uh, another removable vent. I'll just, I'm going to save myself the trouble of popping it up, but it pops out the same way. That's also where the drain tube with its cap will be so that he can just drain it right from the front. Now let's I'll slide this around so you can get a good look at the cable management. Okay. The way the airflow works on this is this large rectangular slot here which leads to that front vent is the intake. Okay, The air will come up, the fans will be facing prop out so they will draw the air into the compartment. The glass doors will basically seal the compartment so that the air will blow past the radiator, I mean past the motherboard, out the radiator past the motherboard into the front and then cycle back over the motherboard and be drawn back 
So basically the motherboard gets cooled too, so we don't have to have a whole bunch of extra fans. Okay, these he, he sent me this radiator for fitment, so I had it, so I went ahead and installed it. I use heat shrink over those little couplings. Did not bother to sheath the fan leads at this point. Well, this is all hidden anyway. But uh, what we've got here is the this is the pump power so that you can jumper a power supply and run in the loop without having to connect it to the power supply. This is the back of the power supply, which I don't know if I showed you. you spin this back around. You're going to see, I don't know if I got enough light to show you. Let's see if I can get that. This is the power supply hutch. Okay, this has a smoked acrylic shield in it with four rocker switches. You can also reach your hand around inside if you want to cut off the power supply. Okay, sometimes you have to hard shut off the power supply when you're overclocking, right? And if you look back here, you'll see these are the four switches. These will go to cold cathode lighting kits, LED lighting, and some other stuff that I'm going to install. And I'll show you videos of that when I get to that point. Okay, and if you look up here, you'll see the two sets of three fan extension leads from the controller. Okay, here's the other three. Okay, this is all the stuff from the 20 and one card reader that I need to get extensions for. I need to get a firewire, a couple of USBs, and some eighth inch mini extenders so we can neatly route that to the back plane of the board through this access slot here. Okay, the power and reset switches are already dropped in through here. They have LEDs as well. So there's in total four two pin leads from there. There's the warning speaker with its lead. Here's the five SATA leads coming from the hot swap device, which has its own venting. Okay, the back of this, okay, which is not pictured here, it's down in the shop. The back of this is just a nice piece of ply that goes over this and it attaches with screws on these cleats which you see top and bottom. And the back will have a foam, a neoprene foam divider that basically will squish up against all of this cabling so when you close the back it divides the two radiators. This will keep the radiators from recycling the air that way. And what keeps the radiators from recycling the air on the inside is they're, they're going to be pushing out and as you can see, the motherboard is about open, so it'll push out and be drawn back up. And I might, I might put a divider right in here out of Lexan, okay, just to encourage that. And all I really need to make that happen is about a two inch piece, which I could glue to the back of this, which I just might do. but sort of waiting to see if it's really required because so I don't think it will be. And this hasn't been attached yet so it's just flopping around. But that's basically it. This is the sort of final wrap up and cable management part of the of the build and so I'll be getting some extension cables which really don't need to get managed. They just get plugged in and flipped through there. I'm going to be putting the foam tee on the back panel and uh, the glass doors have already been fitted. They work great. I've got the hardware for that ready to go. So there's not a whole lot more to it. I thought I'd show you a couple of neat little things that you might not know about. These are female to female or male to male or whatever they want to call them. These are SATA cable extenders. You can get them from Frozen CPU. I want to thank Oliver Wood over at Overclock.net for letting me know about these. Which are very handy because that way you don't have to have a four, you know, a tight fit or whatever. You can route the cables the way you like. So there you have it. The Caliga Cab by CyberDruid PC.